Welcome back to another Albato video. In today's video, we're going to be watching a game played by Seitzer. Now, if you don't know who Seitzer is, you're definitely going to want to know by the end of this video. But first, we need to talk about what the Defender Cup is. The Defender Cup is a tournament ran by Riot where you qualify to get into the tournament by your rank. You need to reach a certain LP threshold to be above everyone else in order to get invited into the tournament. Now, this tournament is happening right now. As I'm recording this, they are currently playing Day 2. And by the time this gets uploaded, it'll probably be the end of day two. But if you still want to tune in to watch the finals, there's still day three and then the final lobby. So you can still tune in. Now, considering there's a day two, that means some players had to get knocked out on day one. And if you don't know who Seitzer's name is, maybe you'll know some of these names of players who actually got knocked out. Solus, TSM Solus, extremely strong player. Asa, Asa, one of the best players to represent NA in previous tournament metas rainplosion the literal player who made it two worlds and kiyun tsm kiyun now, all those players are extremely strong and they are not in the tournament anymore now of course they can qualify through other means but that all has to do with how future events work out so now that i'm not talking about defender cup let's get into this game Spitzer started bow. It was actually uncontested. This game was the second game played of six games in the Defender Cup Day 1. He's holding a couple of pairs. He has the Kale pair. He has the Renekton pair. He hits the Kale too. Let's see if he goes ahead and makes it. He also is holding this Vi to hope that he gets Underground in. And it looks like he's just going to play a comp that revolves around building Sunfire Cape and then playing around Bow. And considering he started Bow, that means he's probably going to be playing AD, some sort of AD line. But he's also holding this Kai'Sa to keep his options open because I watched some of his other games and he definitely considers Kai'Sa to still be among one of the best comps in the game right now. And he plays, he played a couple other Kaisa games, so I think he really understands how to play that line. And since he has preparation, this Kaisa, since he got it extremely early, it might be a fully prepped Kaisa. So if he was if he's able to get items for Kaisa in the future, then he might consider playing it. So the preparation playstyle is definitely super interesting. It's this weird playstyle where you kind of hit, are, are okay with not hitting every single econ benchmark. And you're going to give up your economy lead most of the time. But that definitely comes with some sort of massive power spike. Depending on when you choose to put in your units that you've been prepping for a while. So... You can see he gets this Renekton in the shop, and since he had the Renekton pair, he's able to make this Renekton too, but what he actually does is he doesn't even choose to make it because he is three loss, and he thinks that there's no way that I'm going to be able to two streak with these players in the lobby, so he doesn't want to make it just in case he would win one, one of these rounds. Three loss into two win streak is extremely viable strategy especially if you think your board is going to be strong and you can beat other people following your first round but he scouts the lobby and he sees that there's too many players that he does not think he has a chance of winning and if you go three loss into one win into one loss then that is almost like a guaranteed bot four but at least he's able to get the five loss streak and now he can actually contest a win or contest a top four because his econ is so much higher than everyone else's so prep units he has this fiora the renekton and the kale online he chooses to make the galio because he gets gold and he's still holding this kaisa considering playing kaisa but you can see he gets dropped he gets he goes for a sword off of carousel because with Kaisa, you can make GS and Gunblade. So, Sword is like a pretty good item. If he got dropped Tear Rod here, then he would have probably slammed Gunblade plus Shiv, and then he probably would have played the Kaisa line. But what happened was, is he got 
you picked sword off of carousel and then you got dropped sword sword so in no world is he playing around kaisa kaisa is definitely still the stronger unit between kaisa and Vayne in that comp even though Vayne got buffed but the thing is, is that he had no veins prepping, so there's no way he would be able to actually stabilize with vein carry and like one fully prepped Kaisa. So he just considers, or he just completely removes that line out of his way to, to try and like figure out what his game plan is going to be. So he rolls down on 3-2. And rolling on 3-2 is definitely a lot more beneficial ex like when you have preparation. Because even if you're not able to fully upgrade your board, most of the time you're able to find units that you can prep later in the game. Now, looking at his spot from right here, he is easily the lowest health in the lobby. And he's definitely not the richest. You can see the player that he's fighting against has the exact same amount of gold as him and his board it's essentially just as stable two unit loss that's not that big of a deal but now he starts he starts winning and we want to see exactly how he chooses to play this so he considers going for set with chain. Wow, set with chain? Last last item unit combination taken. But he actually goes for glove. Because there are too many strong glove items that he can go for. With the comp that he's playing. Now of course he definitely is looking to make last whisper. Since he started bow, there's a good chance that he's going to get dropped a bow later on in the game. And he, you see, he, he actually chooses to roll even more, even deeper on level 6. And he actually does get bailed out. He's able to find this Samira. And of course he's not going to put it in and transfer the items now because he wants this Samira to be prepped. So his board... You know, it's somewhat stable. He has this Cho'Gath too. Like, his front line is insane. His back line is good because of the items that he has. But he is so broke. Being 20 gold level 6 on 3-6 means that you're not hitting level 8 into, like, stage 5. So, essentially what's going to happen... What, what's going to have to happen here is he is going to have to roll on 7 and pray... That he gets bailed out by hitting either an Urgot, an Aphelios, a Fiddlesticks, or a Samira 2. So he levels a 7 on 4 1 with only 20 gold left. I would say most of the time, if you have pretty decent econ, you can level the 7 on 4 1 with 40 or 50 gold left. But like I said, since he's playing preparation, he has to use more gold to hold on to units at every single stage of the game, and that is costing him, and he had to roll deep on level 6. But his board definitely is stable. He has a fully prepped Samira 2. Okay, this is a really interesting decision. So, if you do not know about the Sure Shot comp, that comp has a lot of traits in it. You can get Fiddlesticks, if you can get Aphelios, and normally... Your traits consist of, you know, Sure Shot, Threat, Corrupted, Aegis, Brawler, uh, Ace, Ox Force, and the uh, Aphelios Arsenal trait. So you can get a ridiculous amount of traits online in this comp, but he actually goes ahead and chooses Ascension. And I think half the reason for that was is because of the way his current board and augment bot is. So he has Celestial Blessing, and he has a massive front line. He has Cho'Gath 2, Ramus 2, Blitzcrank 2, uh, Renekton 2, and this Zack. His entire team, team is essentially front line. So I think 
His thoughts behind choosing Ascension over Stan United is that he is probably going to be playing this board for a lot longer than he's going to be able to play the like capped Aphelios Urgot board that I talked about. And there is no guarantee that he's going to get to that spot, but there is a guarantee that he's going to have this strong board right now at this stage of the game. And so he he's looking at his traits and he knows that he's not going to be playing more than four traits for a long time. He chooses not to go stand United and he goes for Ascension. So Ascension, of course, pairs really well with healing because if your units have a lot higher chance of surviving, then they have a lot higher chance of making it to Ascension. And in this meta, there are a lot of really like long fights and overtime happens a lot more than you might think. So he finds this Janna. The Janna is sunny though. And he's thinking about playing it because of how strong the Janna unit is, and it'll give him two civilian. But the thing is, is that it is sunny weather, so it's not too beneficial. You can see he just puts the sunny weather on some backline units, and you do not know the shield runs out after 15 seconds. So most of the time when you put it on backline units, if you have a strong enough frontline, it almost does nothing half the time. But of course, Janna still comes along with a massive tornado CC, so Janna alone is like a really strong unit okay and so his entire team is prepped fully prepped except for this urgot and this jenna and the zack so he takes out those units to make sure that he gets the prep stacks on pve rounds he goes ahead and sells the sejuani he says i don't want to play the sejuani and then he hits an aphelios and a samira immediately so kind of of like what I said, he's definitely going to need to, to hit these units if he's going to have any chance of surviving through this game. He also is able to get Last Whisper from the Anvil. So his comp is coming together fantastically. Now, I don't think he played this game bad at any point in time of the game, but he definitely gets bailed out pretty hard by these shops later on. Also, if you do not know, Zach just recently got a buff and Zack is now an extremely powerful unit. So he's down to play a fully prepped Zack too as his uh, premier frontline tank. Okay, so now that he's in this spot where he can kind of start playing the game and formulating exactly what he wants to do, he wants to understand his positioning, he wants to understand weighing the benefits of Choosing to sack and go level 9 or just donkey roll on level 8. He's trying to weigh the benefits of whether or not it is better to have Aegis in the comp. Whether it's whether it's better better or not to play the fiddlesticks. And you can see he, he definitely, uh, throughout a lot of this game, he kind of rearranges his board in a bunch of different ways. This enemy has a Leona with RFC and blue buff. He wasn't, he, he should have made sure his Zac didn't get targeted by that, but it's obviously an extremely hard thing to spot this late in the game. And yeah, this was a pretty crazy decision. So he has Urgot pair and he could have went for a final tank item. Like there was Declaw in the carousel. Now, one of the opponents took the Declaw the same time that he went for the Urgot, but I'm pretty sure he was going to go for the Urgot anyways, so he, basically he values Urgot 2 over fully itemized tank, and, and I think it makes sense. Urgot is an insane unit. He's, he's dealing, like, does so much damage, he gives you so much gold. If you can get an Urgot 2 to make sure he survives longer, deals more damage, he sees longer, probably better than, than a final tank item. So yeah, he chooses to put in Alistar and Echo instead of Fiddlesticks and Janna. And the main reason why he did that is because he's looking at this lobby and most of it is AP. There's, there's Viego players, there's Talia players. He, he values the Aegis and the sunny weather is just not strong enough. 
he has celestial blessing so he's not worried about his backline somehow getting cheesed through some some form of backline ap access and yeah he really just wants ages in so he's looking to prep his units even further he notices that his ergot is actually fully prepped but this aphelios and this alistar is not fully prepped so he benches them to make sure to give them the prep stacks and i think one thing he might have missed on that i noticed in a lot of these final fights is that he has this last whisper on this aphelios but he chooses to stay using the stun gun and he also never same sides the aphelios and either the Urgot or the Samira. This Aphelios is always targeting a unit on the right side, and he always chooses to put the Aphelios and the Samira on the left side, or vice versa. And Last Whisper is definitely not an item that you have to have on your main carry, but you really want to make sure that the Last Whisper, the unit that the Last Whisper unit is targeting is also like being targeted by your main carry. And even if it's not being targeted by your main carry, maybe consider at least having Urgot on the same side because Urgot does a whole bunch of AD damage as well. So if you have Urgot and Aphelios targeting the same unit, then that can, you know, just shred through a target extremely quickly. And he chooses to never use the Duskwave gun, and the Duskwave gun would hit a bunch of units applying Last Whisper. And he already has Urgot stun as well as Fiddlestick stun, so I don't know if the stun gun would be like that more effective considering he already has so much CC. But, but he, he is in a Defender Cup and I am not, so. And so yeah, another really cool decision is, is that he chooses to keep an Aegis right, and I think Ramus is more known to be a stronger unit than Cho'Gath. Like, Cho'Gath mana reeves, but Ramus like, does like a massive stun. And most of the time, the stun is more beneficial than the mana reeve. Sometimes the mana reeve is like really powerful, but I would say generally the stun is more widely appreciated than the Cho'Gath mana reeve. But he chooses to replace Ramus with Fiddlesticks, not Cho'Gath. And that is because Cho'Gath has built-in MR. He Cho'Gath is the the MR tank, and Ramus is the AD tank. And in the same vein of keeping of prioritizing Aegis in, he's prioritizing playing the Cho'Gath because if this Cho'Gath can survive a couple more hits from, you know, like this Viego or Talia, then that can actually like swing the fight. And so yeah, he's getting pretty low here. He's been donkey rolling for this Aphelios for a while. And he just has not hit it yet. But, you know, the rest of his board is upgraded. He's trying to get, he's trying to contest a win. He's trying to make sure he has the highest chances of winning a fight. He prioritizes shrouding the Mordekaiser and the Urgot. He doesn't really care about shrouding the Viego. Diego as much because the the amount of support you get from Mordekaiser and Urgot's abilities is more than Diego's initial cast. He's gonna go ahead and take a Felios out so he can fully prep him. And it's really getting down to the wire here. So it's Seitzer, I Lucky, and Kivix. Some extremely strong players. He finally hits the Aphelios. He chose to stay level 8 the entire game to make that happen. And it is an Orn item anvil. He goes for Death's Defiance because he doesn't really care about Blitzgrab and he doesn't have a unit to put Eternal Winter on. He wants to fully itemize this Urgot. Now that he has Aphelios too, this Aphelios is going to start doing some pretty crazy damage. His whole board is upgraded and it doesn't look like his opponent's were able to upgrade their board in the same way. That guy still has Leona 2 or Leona 1. And Zach, even though Cho'Gath, like everything that I said about Cho'Gath there, Zach is still a 4 cost. It's going to be stronger than Cho'Gath. 
he holds on the uh zack pair to make sure that if he hits zack two he can choose to put that in Ivix finally hits Leona too, but the thing is, is he's targeting his Fiddlesticks, and the Fiddlesticks actually becomes immune after he gets broken down to, to the Corrupted range. What ends up happening is he actually double kills the lobby. So, this is the second game that Sightser played in the Defender Cup, and his scores were 1, and then this game, 1, 5, one, three, one. He ended the day with 42 points and you only needed 27 to qualify on the day two of the Defender Cup. It, just like an incredible performance put on by this guy, he ended up at the number one spot for the end of day one and he gets an extra three bonus points moving on to day two. And I thought this game was extremely one of the best games that he had played all day considering he was playing it from a loss streak it's really hard to play around prep i think he played around it extremely well i hope you learned something from this video like the video if you liked it and i'll see you in the next one